this video we're going to look at orthogonal matrices. We're going to start by taking this matrix Q here and using the definition of orthogonal show that this matrix is orthogonal. We're then going to look at what Q does to a vector. We're first going to show that Q applied to a vector does not change the length of that vector. And then for part C we will show that Q is actually a rotation around the origin. Let us begin. To show that this vector here is orthogonal means we have to show that Q times Q transpose is equal to the identity, which is also equal to Q transpose Q. Hmm. All right then. Well, this should be fairly easy, easy to do. We just take Q, multiply by its transpose, and we hope to get the identity. Let's do that. Q, Q transpose is equal to cos theta negative sine theta sine theta cos theta and big shout out to all you people who've never seen transpose before the transpose is not difficult to find it's just the same as the matrix Q except you reflect in the long diagonal so that's cos theta cos theta the diagonal stays the same and these entries swap so the negative sine theta goes down there and the sine theta goes up there and I get left with well when I multiply this out I get cos squared plus sine squared which is 1 cos sine minus cos sine si uh, cos sine minus cos sine and sine squared plus cos squared which is the identity excellent exactly what I was expecting we do the same thing with Q transpose Q this is again the identity matrix hence Q is orthogonal and along the way we've discovered something very interesting we've discovered that Q transpose is Q inverse Q times Q transpose is the identity matrix which means that the transpose is the identity so let's begin part B by taking this length here QX and I'll take the square of this length. The reason I do that is because I can then break this out as a dot product. Dot QX. Which I can write as a product of matrices. I can write this as QX transpose times by QX. Where if you like this is a row vector and this is a column vector. So you can multiply this out and see that you still get this same quantity is given by the dot product. The reason I write it this way is because I can then take the transpose inside here and I get X transpose Q transpose Q that's not a vector Q times X like that. And I've just seen from part A that because Q is orthogonal this is the identity matrix. So I end up with X transpose X which is as I saw before, this is just length x squared. Good, so the square length of qx is the same as the square length of x, which allows me to say that, hence, length qx is equal to length x, just by taking square roots. So now in part c, we're going to show that this orthogonal matrix here is a rotation matrix. And I've drawn a picture with x and qx up here, and we're interested in this angle between the two vectors. Fortunately, we have a formula for the angle between two vectors, or at least the cos of the angle between two vectors, and that is that qx dotted with x is equal to length x times length qx times cos of alpha. And this is what we will use to connect orthogonal matrices to the angle between vectors. So let's start off with qx dot x. qx dotted with x is equal to q, which is cos theta, negative sine theta sine theta cos theta, times by x, which is x1, x2, dotted with x1, x2. And I can multiply these two together and I get cos theta x1 minus sine theta x2 sine 
theta x1 plus cos theta x2 dotted with x1, x2. And I can expand this out. I get x1 squared plus x2 squared cos theta. The sine x1, x2 cancels with this sine x1, x2. So all I get left with is this, which is equal to mod x1 squared cos theta. Hmm. So now I can invoke this lovely formula over here to conclude. Hence, length x1 squared cos theta is equal to this qx dot x, which is equal to this length x times length qx times cos of alpha. And by part b, I know length of qx is just length of x, so that cancels with that and that, and I get left with cos of theta it is equal to cos of alpha. Hence theta, well, I'll just write that out, hence cos theta is equal to cos of alpha, and this tells you that the angle of rotation alpha is related to theta. In fact, it tells you that alpha is equal to plus or minus theta plus 2 pi k, or k in the element of the integers. So we've discovered that the angle of rotation here is plus or minus theta. And what we've done already is enough to establish that this is a rotation. We can go a little bit further and establish that alpha is just equal to theta. So, since q of 1, 0 is equal to cos theta sine theta, then this is just a rotation by positive theta. So we've gone a bit further than what the question actually asked us to do. We've shown that alpha is equal to theta. That the matrix Q is a rotation matrix and it rotates by an angle of theta.